escape Padawans and welcome back to story time with the llama. Hey, hey, wait, I thought Paul asked you to open the show. <sighs> Dang it. I guess old habits die hard. Sorry, guys. Let's try again. This is the llama. And Mrs. Llama. From Yavin 4 and Storytime with the Llama. And you're listening to the Escape Pod cast. This show was recorded in front of a live studio audience. Take it away, guys. I gotta get ready for story time and not mess anything else up. Anything else to say, Mrs. Llama? No, I think you covered it. Enjoy the show. One is a Grand Arena specialist from the UK. The other is a territory battle tactician from the US. Together, there are no signs of intelligent life on board. With both having played this game since launch, the one thing we are sure of is that you will be entertained. The Escape Pod Cast, a service of the Escape Pod Castaways. A weekly podcast about the mobile game Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Live from the network studios of Yavin 4, here are your hosts, Neil Andrew Eyre and Paul Anthony. Coming up on this week's edition of the Escape Pod Cast. We give our thoughts on Kenobi Gates. And we talk about what we think that a Clone Wars era GL would look like. Ah, maybe a few others as well. We also have had a fun week of GAC matchups, Neil. We had a DB official versus Gridden this past Monday. There's a possible matchup of Lazy Turtle versus Kiyoi on Monday. And later tonight, when this is recorded, Urza will face Zareth Prevails. We talk about your idea that you put up for a Dear Dojo video regarding personalized PvP. And what it could mean for content creators. Then we catch up with an old friend. Fighting Drunk joins us for the incoming transmission. We'll ask him about what could bring him back to the game and, you know, what he misses the most. And then on the bridge, we answer some questions. And we will also get you ready for the aforementioned Urz versus Zareth battle. As we will raid into that show, if you are watching live with us. This is an exciting show coming up, Neil. All this and breaking news as and if it happens. Right here on the Escape Pod cast. The Escape Pod cast news. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Escape Pod cast. I'm your host, the Nev, and as always, I'm joined by my hetero life partner, Paul. Paul, how are you today? I am doing well. It's been a uh, it's been a fun week, uh, especially you know Monday itself. You and I hosted a huge, huge battle, um, and we're going to be getting into that in the second segment. Um, but the lead off this week is Kenobi Gate. Kenobi Gate. So. Um, forgive me. I forget exactly who it is. I'm sure I can go find out real quick. Um, there it is. Well, uh, uh, the, 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 the toss up, as far as I'm concerned and how he should be forever be referred to is either Darth Photoshop or General Adobe. General Adobe. Yes. General Adobe General is General Adobe or, or Darth Photoshop. <laughs> I, I got to go with General Adobe because that was awesome. Uh, Exomander, Exodi, or Commander Zodi with X's instead of C's, um, hiding his name of who he actually is because he created that name to admit to making the fake screenshot because apparently he's getting, he's getting a lot of, a lot of like terrible things said his way. Well, yeah, because he's going to he, get, he, you, you can just, just, just say he's getting insulted a lot. He's getting yeah. a lot, there, there are a lot of mean, he's going to, he's going to get a lot, you know, he's going to get insulted. He is going to be insulted. He's going to be berated. Um, you know, people are going to say, uh, things about him because, you know, that's what happens on the internet when you do something fake. You know, people will say a lot of mean things to you. So, uh, yeah. People are going to say mean things to him. 
why you know with the, there's lots of people that that photoshop and have fun things with you know do other things in yeah in a, in again, a satirical way if, if it was done in a satirical way people would either be criticizing him for doing something funny or not funny he did not do this with the intention of being satirical or funny he did it with the direct intention to mislead the um the player base into thinking that something had been leaked and this was coming up in the game and that's not why, the player base and that's why people thought he you know that's why people started insulting him and, and saying mean things to him he wasn't trying to insult the player base he was trying he did it for no, I'm a saying friend he was insulting i'm saying he did it deliberately to mislead people into thinking that this was something coming to the game he did it for one person and that one person then spread it around and you have confirmation so, of this yes yes so his so he this photoshopped was his... it as a joke to a friend to one friend and that yes. one friend was the person that spread it around so for those that don't read Reddit, here it is. So, you know, Commander Zodi, the account that he made uh, to admit to it, he says, I'd like to apologize to the community. I did not ever intend for the fake to leave my inner circle. I created it in Photoshop, took about 45 minutes. I used a photo of a Kenobi action figure. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Pasted it into a screenshot I took of someone with no guild, changed some text, added a drop shadow to the text, put a gradient overlay, blah, 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 blah. I made it to troll my friend who is a Kenobi fanboy, sent it to him via DM. So that means he sent it to one person. Well, then in that case, the mean words and the insults are being directed at the wrong person. Yeah. He then posted it on his Swedish guild discord and someone from there spread it on other discords or put it on YouTube. I've been using Photoshop for 12 years. If I really wanted to fake it, I could have spent several hours on it and made a fake so good that no one would be able to tell. It was intended as a quick fake for my friend who is not Photoshop literate. I'm sorry if my actions caused anyone to stress out over farms or anything. I did not know it would spread and blow up like this. My friend is pretty pissed at me, and I imagine others are let down now that you know that General uh, that Galactic Legend Kenobi is not coming. Believe me or not, I'm posting here from a new Reddit account for obvious reasons. But I do hope that CG learns from this that the community really wants Galactic Legend Kenobi to happen. <laughs> yeah, so it was a it was a a prank played on someone who, without realizing that they were being pranked, told the world and the world accepted, despite the fact that, you know, it was a friend pranking a friend. And so, gee, uh, we've had that happen before here. What? Somebody someone, speculated. Someone, pranking someone else. Yeah, someone speculated about the requirements for a certain unlock, and then they spread, then they mentioned it to someone else, and because they mentioned it um because they put it in a discord somebody screenshot it and scotty got blown up for leaking requirements yeah no no the, the thing you know um a, a lie will travel twice around the world before people realize that you know it's it's a lie or that it's rubbish you know that's that's what happens in the internet that is what happens in the internet age you know, I think it would be more than twice around the world nowadays. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it does. I mean, it, you, you you would think in this day and age, because of the speed of the internet, that things like this get kind of, um, uh, you know, um, errors, mistakes, um, pranks, misinformation, trolling, gets uh, corrected. You'd think it would get corrected much, much sooner in the internet age, but certain things take certain time, you know, Um uh, so some things get debunked or um, uh, uh, proven to be uh, incorrect or wrong uh, quickly, and other things literally take months uh, because, you know, people don't want to believe. I mean, if if this had happened with, like, for example, if this had happened with a JKL, before, you know, when we didn't have, imagine not having a JKL, if somebody had done something like this with JKL, um, 
you know, I'm invested in the JKL character. So it's something <laughs> that I probably would have fell for hook, line and sinker. And then, you know, people would have been like, you know, slowly dripping. Oh, it's fake. It's fake. And I'd be like, no, no, it's not. We're getting a galactic legend, Luke Skywalker. <laughs> no, it's not fake. You're 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 bad. You're evil. You, I hate you. Go away. You know, don't 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 destroy my true. It's <laughs> stop destroying my confirmation bias. I, I, I want it to be, you know, so it does. You know, sometimes it doesn't take that long and sometimes it takes weeks, if not months. Thankfully, you know, it only took you know, a couple of days. So if one of that. the things that stood out from their, um, from their post, what they were talking about, um, was they didn't mean to stress out people on farms. Well, I mean, we don't even know when the next GL is coming or what the next GL is going to be, but people are stressing out over it already. Bef before this fake, before this, um, very good uh, um, prank was played on somebody, which was then played on the entire community. Uh, people have been getting stressed out because everybody is under the assumption that the uh, relic requirements for whatever the next GL is going to be is going to be Relic 8. Because most people have, uh, at the top end, at the higher end, uh, of the uh, uh, of the Swagger community, most people at the higher end of the Swagger community have got most factions and most good characters already relicked. So the next time a Galactic Legend comes out, if they don't make that extra extra annoying Relic Eight requirement, a lot of people that have already got all four relics are probably going to have a character base relicked already meeting the requirements for whatever the next GLs are. Uh, and, you know, CG isn't going to want to release uh, a new GL without forcing the community to relic characters that either they don't want to or don't need to. Um, so, yeah. Well, let's look. Let's go ahead and speculate here. Um, and by the way, Legalize Vendetta asks on the Twitch chat, so what's the next big thing in the game uh, in the game? For me, I'm thinking the next big thing is going to be these the the Galactic Challenges 2.0 that they've been talking about. Mm, yeah, they're, 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 it's either it's either going to be it's either going to be the next pair of GLs. Uh, not not them coming into the game, just their announcement because they like to T they, they like to take uh, three months from announcing uh, new GLs to them actually physically being in the game. Because if you remember what they've done with the last two sets of GLs is uh, over a period of three months, they drip feed the release of which characters need to be relicked. They do them in, you know, in trenches of three. So if they were to announce this month that the next two GLs will be X and Y, they'll then spread out over the period of three months what the requirements are so that people can pace themselves along and then boom we'll get them uh, or so, as you said it could be galactic challenges or it could be um uh, it could be uh, uh, another a, a full raid N not not something like the um the crank or uh, because you know a, a lot of the, the uh, as far as as far as I'm concerned, the 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 interest in the Crankle raid has already started to wane um, because they they still haven't reduced the uh, relic level requirements for that event, and there are bugs and issues with it, making it you know stupidly hard uh, unless you're in a guild that has sufficient numbers of GL rays and slackers. Yeah, well, we did we did see. We did see something, and we'll talk about the crank or coming up in in a moment. Uh, but let's go. Let you and I right now. Let's speculate on what characters would be needed if, because we need what thirteen characters. It's How many th was it's, it? It's well, usually it's usually thirteen in a ship. Thirteen in a ship. So I'm guessing you would need the negotiator at seven star. That would force a spend of get two. Yeah. You would need old Ben and raid Ben. I would think so. So far, we're, we've already done the ship. We've got the two. 
We've got the two. I'm saying we would need Ahsoka, General Anakin Skywalker. So it would force another, you know, late game character. And I'm thinking Rex or Cody for five oh uh, for uh, the five twelfth. Well, here's the thing. Um, sp specifically, regard. I mean, the only there's there is one person, um, and and I do believe there's probably there's probably a handful, but the, there's one person that I know. There's only one person that I actually know that would be ready, um, requirement wise, for a Galactic Legend um kenobi and that is jedi master adastra because the requirements for a gl kenobi would be all of those galactic republic jedi that nobody wants to farm i'm a gundy eth koth ayala luminari kiani mundi kiani mundi yeah it, they would make it all of those galactic republic jedi um because most people would already have the likes of the clone troopers relic. So, I mean, that, don't get me wrong. They would probably be part of the requirement as well. And they would be like the Gizit. Like with Jedi Master Luke, um, a bunch of people already had characters relic from going for JKL. So it's like, oh, great. I only need to relic half the characters. I only need to do this. Thank Ooh. you, Llama, for you, Llama. giving out five subs. <laughs> so, in, the, in the chat thank you <laughs> uh but i i do think um you know the the, the next the next gl were, i mean the kiani uh, kiadi mundi uh, you know cam as a requirement would be tough it would be nasty um because if you remember when they brought the requirements out for jkl and that this wasn't even a galactic legend when they brought the requirements out for that they threw in rolo <laughs> You know, and um, Rolo was a, um, I mean, yeah, you can get Rolo from uh, um, one of the assault battles. I think it's one of the bounties. Um, but apart from that, you needed to use, um, you needed to get shards from the uh, Hoth territory battle. So, you know, there was a lot of people immediately behind the curb. Granted, it's a lot easier to do the Hoth territory battle than the light side GOTB. Um, but, uh, yeah, it'll be, you know, so, so we're talking, uh, Anakin, um, Ahsoka, some of the clone troopers, and then all of the old school Jedi, because they're, they're characters that they know people haven't heavily invested in, but it's, it's just like they have with other previous, it's just like they did with the, um, the fluff regarding Kylo Ren when they did Slacker, a bunch of first order characters that nobody really wanted to relic up, but. You know, if you want your general Kenobi, you, you're going to have to do your Eeth Koth, and you're going to have to do your Plo Koon, so, you're going to have okay, to do so, your Ayala. Uh, Commando Tug in the Twitch chat says, Cam won't be because there's no paywall behind Cam. <laughs> you forget, I believe, uh, somebody could correct me if I'm wrong, at one point they did release packs for Rolo and for IPD. And yes. they come around every so often so you can advance it a, a little bit more. Yeah. Which they're kind of due to do so for both Watt and Cam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that they would... Because cause the, the swing side of a GL Kenobi, um, the swing side of a GL Kenobi would be, well, what would the dark side faction be it'd have to be separatists so like you just said a seven star negotiator would be needed for a gl kenobi i can guarantee you that, it, that, that the swing side of that would be a seven star malevolence required on a, the separatist side and then you but the separatists ones again would be easier because most people have geos most people have separatist droids most people have um um uh, Dooku and Django and Newt. So uh, I, I think it would be easier because they'd, ha they'd have to throw a couple of random characters in there. Um, they would have to throw a couple of random characters in there. They couldn't just throw a couple of random Night Sisters in there because most people have got Night Sisters um, done pretty well. So they'd have to throw a couple of random characters in there like they have uh, on previous events. Like um, Krennic for C 
I mean, so who the, what, what's Krennic got to do with C? <laughs> Nothing. But they made who, it, made force people to do it, didn't they? Who would be that dark side um, character? I think it'd be General opinion? Thrace. What do you say? I think it'd be General Thrace. Hmm. I think it would be Robo Mall. Really? You think it'd be Robo, Robo Legs Mall? Mall? Because he did so. He was so. He was such the antagonist of the entire Clone Wars. I mean, the last episode dealt with, you know, the capture of Maul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know people would like to see. I know people would like to see the. Um, I know people would like to see um, Darth Vader before the, obviously before the, uh, the helmet and the black leather. Um, right. And I, I, I've I've made the argu you know I've made the argument and then. Um, conceded the argument um, because it was a silly argument um, that you know he he was uh, you know Darth Vader was only in that form um, in Episode Three for what the last twenty minutes of the movie um, and does that warrant a Galactic Legend level? I mean, I, I no. would argue that it I, I would argue that it warrants it could you you could legitimately argue for the character in the game because. You know, Boba Fett had, until the Mandalorian, Boba Fett had that, you know, less screen time. You know, Greedo had, I mean, Greedo was on screen to simply get shot. Oh, and a, you know, so there are characters in the game that have had very, very little screen time. I just don't think that, I just don't think that Darth Vader, um, outside his, the, the Vader uniform, um, is, is warranted enough for a galactic legend level character maybe you know a push legendary but more I, I would say more marquee level than than galactic legend level all right uh by the way thank you to azuriel for following we appreciate that uh, my response to that is i think if they do anything i don't think that a fallen anakin slash early darth vader would be a galactic legend now, a quote-unquote hero's journey, yes. Only as long as you get to play as Anakin slaughtering younglings. Please. Please, CG. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I, I think uh, um, a hero's fall, legendary event that gives you, um, you know, that gives you uh, a, a more darker-looking Anakin, but with the Darth Vader name. Because people keep saying fallen Anakin. It, it's, it, he's Darth Vader. You, you, there is no in between. He was Anakin Skywalker, and then he was Darth Vader. He wasn't Anakin Skywalker, fallen Anakin, then Darth Vader. Anakin Skywalker became Darth Vader. So, inside the uniform, outside the uniform, before or after, it, it, he would still be. You could not call him fallen Anakin. He would have to be called Darth Vader because that's what he was. He so was. What would the name be though? Because that we can't. You know, they they changed Sith Trooper to Sith Empire Trooper. What would the name be? Would it be Darth Vader Fallen? No, no, it would just be Darth Vader. But we already have a quote unquote Darth Vader. What would the what would the name be? It'd have to be Darth. You know, Darth Vader, and you know, uh, in brackets, Fallen Anakin. Not, it just, it, you see, this is this is the problem that we have. You know, uh, maybe they could just call him Vader. Uh, and that's why I was thinking is just Vader. Maybe maybe they could just just do Vader. You know, maybe they could. I mean, is Sion Sion or Darth Sion? Sion's Darth Sion. He is Darth Sion, and as and Darth, yeah, and Darth. Trey and we Darth. have Darth Maul, so yeah. it would just be Maul. Maul. Yeah. Because he renounced the Darth name. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's a you know it, it's a tough it's a tough nut to crack. Do I think that he's he you know he's a character that would be good in the game? Yeah. I I, I just don't think it warrants a galactic legend level character. I really really don't. Lord Vader, Commander Tug, Commander mm. Tug says Lord Vader. Lord Vader, yeah, no, Lord Vader would work. Yeah, he says there's already too many Anakins in the game, though. The uh, Galactic Legends that come next are not going to be story plot, 
as there'll more likely be a pair of Galactic Legends to beat the current meta. But they talked about that they would be in pairs. They did yeah. mention well, they would they, be in yeah. pairs. That all, I mean, they said from the from the get go that GLs were going to get released in pairs. There's going to be a light side GL and a dark side GL. So we will get two GLs. It's just what era are we going to get? Um, you know what what era are we going to get? That that's you know. By the way, more more requirements. If we were to get a Gal uh, Galactic Legend Kenobi, what about the Bad Batch? Yeah, no, that would that um that would yeah that would work definitely. Um, I, I think it's I do think that maybe maybe we'll maybe they'll put it on pause. Maybe they'll go instead of instead of giving us some more GLs. Maybe they'll revert back to the um oh what was the um what was the event type called for your for Malik and for GK? Sorry for GK for General Skywalker for Gas. What was that event called? The gas event where you got them at five stars and then you had to find them afterwards. Was it epic confrontation? That's it. Epic confrontation. Maybe, maybe we'll get a couple of epic confrontations this year. Maybe we'll get an epic confrontation. I, I, I would, I would rather see an epic confrontation, gen, uh, an epic confrontation Kenobi um, than a GL because you need that. You would need the separatist on the other side. Um or maybe, you know, another, you know, I, I, I just think I, I think it would be prudent for CG just to give the GLs a little bit of breathing time. OK, let this let 2021 come out because we're going to get a lot of TV shows. Right. There's going to be a lot of TV shows. There's going to be some old characters. There's going to be some new characters um, mixed in with the shows. Um, you know, Disney and Lucasfilm can see what the fan base falls in love with from a character point of view. Um, I mean, there are some, uh, you know, I, I would like to see maybe go, go down the epic confrontation route for a couple of characters because they can just be one offs, a couple of epic confrontations in 2021 and then come back in 2022 and slap us in the face with GL Ahsoka, GL Thrawn. Well, you, you may very well get your wish, Neil, because remember, at the very end of of the talk about the armor, they says, what does this mysterious Mandalorian mean for Galaxy of Heroes? Find out next month. We'll have more to share in January's State of the Galaxy, which means next week we're getting a State of the Galaxy. State of the Galaxy, yeah. The, the, the best friend of a content creator. Mm -hmm. I just hope that it'll actually be a long one and not just one of those where we go, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, and if it comes as, out as on long Friday. As, it, as long as it's not like the State of Galaxy that we got in March of last year. I just, that was, I read that and I'm thinking, seriously, that's it? That's all you're giving us? That was, so, that was, so, it was, it was without, it was the worst Galact, it was the worst one that we'd ever been given. It really was the worst State of the get, Galaxy. Or if, if this does come out on Friday, we will read it live for the first time on the show. But if it comes out on a Wednesday, we're going to have to spoil ourselves. Yeah. But, all right, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the exciting week that was in GAC. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It, we had some fun on Monday, and we'll recap that coming up next right here on the Escape Pod cast. The Escape Pod cast with Paul Anthony and Neil Andrew Ware. Hello, friends. This is Thaddeus from Going Nerdy, and I approve this message and am compensated for signups for this service. The world's largest audiobook library is at your fingertips, and the Escape Pod Castaways wants you to try it for free. Head on over to escapepodcastaways.com and click the Going Nerdy Offer button to claim a free audiobook and two Audible Originals. Cancel any time, and it's absolutely free to sign up. Check out Audible and support the Escape Pod Castaways, all for free. See Audible website for details. Restrictions may apply. Did you know that if you signed up to become a Patreon, you could get tons of rewards? Force Go Scotty could do a roster review for you. Neil Andrew Air could share Grand Arena tactics. Or Paul could even help you get maximum stars in Geonosis Territory Battle. Ah, and you even get access into the after show. Sound good? Sign up to be a Patreon today. For as little as $2 a month, you could unlock a ton of potential content. 
and also get closer to the hosts. Head to patreon.com backslash the escape pod to sign up. The following Guild Classified is brought to you by Doombringer. Do you think Watt Tambor is the only true galactic legend? Do you like to play seriously without the constant stresses of meeting lofty expectations? Does your current home not give you the return on your investment that you seek? Then look no further and join Doombringer of the Techno Union. Doombringer is a friendly and independent perennially overachieving guild with 280 plus million GP and it's looking for a few active and engaged members. We boast an impressive 130 and 12 TW record with no micromanagement or sandbagging while maintaining a relaxed approach across all guild events. Doombringer features lots of experienced players who love to help others work through teams, mods, and strategies to find success in all game modes. If you love to play Swaga, want to have success and fun, and have a good attitude and a focused roster, then we're a good match. We request 600 tickets per day and a roster with potential. Find our contact info on swgoh.gg and we'll chat about your potential future as part of the greatest guild in the galaxy. Would you like to hear your guild featured right here on the Escape Podcast Guild Classifieds? Reach out to us on our Discord server and post in the on-air classified room under the Yavin 4 Network Hello, Studios. I am Andy Beads, commander of the 506 Procrastination Battalion. And I'm Camp Director Flair of Gaming Embers. We are the officers of the Chain Gang. For a collection of Twitch streamers that like to stream our Grand Arena Championship battles. In Star Wars Galaxy Heroes. We feature accounts of all sizes. From the large accounts like Fruit Ninja Mike. To the small accounts like, well, mine. We have Grand Arena action for all viewers. With names like The Llama. Ran B. Dr. Zeppers. Mr. Jigabachi. Geek Girl 1980. Rico. Kate Gaming. Flair. Andy Beads. And the Escape Podcast's own The Nev. We bring you continuous game action every day during the attack phase. Check us out and ride the raid chain from streamer to streamer with us. The Chain Gang is a proud feature of the Escape Pod Castaways. See you on the chain, ya hosers. The Escape Pod Cast. And we're back, ladies and gents. Yes, we are. And I don't know if anybody's seen that, but uh, the the uh, Urza's done his timer because he always does his... Uh, he does an alert to say, I'll be going live in X amount of minutes. I don't know. Was that, I don't know if it was that 30 minutes. He's actually live. He, he, you know, the, we, I understand that this may, thank you to every single uh, viewer that's out there watching the live recording of this episode. Um, but he has gone live now. Oh, right. I thought I, it was just a notification to say, no, when he's no, going I, live. I know, I know this may hurt us. He, he's in his, he's in the pre, um, it's just the picture of Ahsoka right now. Oh, right. Okay. Um, but he is right now. Um, he's he's gone live. But yeah, he he won't for those be... that for those that have haven't already tuned away, he's not doing the battle versus Zareth until after the show. Yeah. They both agreed to do that battle after we went off the air. So yeah. thank you to Zareth. Zareth thank thank you to Urs both of you for allowing us uh to uh to do that yeah and and we will yeah. be watching it and talking about it live in the after show once this because obviously the show will be over and, and and once the show is finished we will do a big old party raid into uh into Zareth stream yeah. and then in the after show we'll be you know we'll all be watching I'm going to have two screens on. I'm going to have Urz's on, and then I'm going to have Zaras on. So whenever one is battling, I'll be at, oh, it's just going to be so awesome. When the show's over, it's going to be like, a, a, you know. So if you are, if you're a Twitch sub or you're a Patreon, you can get into the, uh, you could get into the after show and Neil and I, while I'm editing and doing all the after show stuff, um, getting the show up on the podcast networks. After that's done, we will be basically live commentating. Also, if you're watching this live, we will be rating Zareth mm -hmm. because Urza's on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, 
I'm Commando Tug. Thank you very much for the sub. <laughs> so yeah, so stick around, stick around, so that we can put together the biggest raiding party possible um, for Zareth. Uh, and if you know anybody that's not watching, try and get them in for the last thirty minutes of the show, so that we can put together a huge, big, juicy, fat raiding party. For Zaref, so when we all jump in, you know, and then everybody type in chat, the Escape Podcast sent us. Because <laughs> that's what so, we used to do before we had raids. Uh, before we had raids, yeah, we would have to true. tell, we would have to put a link in the chat and we would have to tell everybody to go there. And then we would say, uh, you know, so-and-so sent me because I would get <laughs> raided from RSG and I, I would get like 20 people in chat all simultaneously going, Finn sent me or Ranger sent me. So, you know, I started doing it back because uh, uh, YouTube doesn't, YouTube and Twitch didn't have that raid <laughs> function. They didn't used to have it. H Hadriel says, don't forget the ellipsis in pod cast. cast. And also, uh, Commando Tug says, Tuscan raiding party, you bet it. You bet we will ride single file in honor of Urs into Zareth Zareth's YouTube or uh, Twitch stream. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I'll still do we, we, we should, we should, I mean, we'll do it on Urza as well. So at the end of the show, I mean, m most people I know are going to have Twitch on one screen or Twitch on one device, and that'll be the raid into Zareth. And then, you know, another window open. I'll have a second window open, a second browser open on my PC to uh, so that I can have Urza's up as well. So everybody, so we're getting, we're getting a lot. We're getting a lot of smack talk in, in the uh, in our live chat right now. It's it's great, um, but we do have to recognize kind of what set this up. Mm -hmm. The excitement of what set this up is what you and I, Neil, what you and I did on Monday. We had the matchup between DB Official and Gridden. You can view it. Uh, after the show or, or, you know, when you have a moment, head on over to our YouTube channel. It is up there. GAC Fight Night. We basically moderated their battle. One battle against one battle. They had two minutes to think. Then they had to make their decision. They went in. They traded blow for blow. I'm not going to spoil who won if you don't know, but it was an amazing it was an amazing time, and I was absolutely honored to be able to host that with you, Neil. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun doing the. Uh, it was a lot of fun doing the commentary on that. It, it was an epic battle because, um, just uh, yeah, it was just the backwards and the forwards, and and you know who took the lead, and and the the, the twists and the turns, and it was like you know that. Uh, what was it? Um, yeah, Grid, Grid had all, you know, Grid was getting all the good RNG and 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 uh, uh, DB was like constantly, what the? It was constant, constant, like, you know, oh, no but way. How, how can I lose? plays back. Yeah, yeah, he was like, you know, he's, he's going along, everything's going fine. And, you know, he'd get towards like the last 10 seconds of the battle and then boom. He'd like have you know one or two banners stolen off him, and you know he was pulling his Both hair out. Did. It was it was awesome. It was so good. Yeah, it was really really good. Both of them were losing banners in the middle. We're, once again, we're not going to spoil who won if you did not see it. So go watch that. But that brings up, um, that brings up. You know, we've already talked about Zareth versus Urz tonight, and we may on Monday have. Uh, Lazy Turtle versus Kiyoi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be good. That's going to be two. That, that that's two two heavyweight accounts there. That is two heavyweight accounts. We're talking two accounts over seven million. Two accounts and over if seven we do, million. And if we do, and if they can, we will give it the same treatment Monday or or Sunday night. Sunday night or Monday, we will do a fight night. Well, if they can on, whoa, both whoa, agree whoa, to whoa, it, no, we will try. We will try. The, we yeah, we we'll don't try. know if schedule if the if if the scheduling of Lazy Turtle and Kiwi allows for it, we will do it. Yeah, that's why that's why that's why I said at the very end, if, if they if they're okay with it, if they, if we can make it happen, we will bring it to you again. Yeah. It's not guaranteed yet. No, it's because we don't know what the uh, a we don't we don't know if they're going to get put together, and b we wouldn't know what their work schedules were would be for either the Sunday night or for the Monday afternoon. We, we just don't know. But, you know, if 
once once we know that they've been put together, that is when we will, you know, start a conversation with them. And it'll be like, right, we'd really like to do a fight night just like we did with Grid and DB. What is a good time? What's a, what's a you know, what's a, um, a convenient time to bring us all together so that we can do something like that? And then, boom, we'll do it. So let's also mention that we've kind of set this um, the way that you've done it. Do you want to explain what we've done with GA Center? We we kind of we didn't have hard limits. We were able to play with a, some numbers to be able to make things like this happen. Do you want to explain what we did as far as the leagues for for those that don't watch GA Center? Oh, what you, what regarding fixing the leagues or or yeah, we, we didn't fix the leagues. Yeah, no, we did. We fit. We what we, what we do, we didn't you know, put the we, fix in. We put a fix in. Basically, yeah, because as as everybody as everybody out there is aware, there are no uh, uh, there are no limits and there are no brackets within Division One. So once you hit that four point five million threshold GP on your account, you are Div One. But we now know that the upper limits. I mean. In GA Center, we, we have, I mean, we, we cover Loki from Reality Skewed Gamers, and his account is over 8 million. So how can you legitimately put an 8 million GP account and a 4.5 million GP account in the same division? So uh, with our show, GA Center, what we did was we, at season one, we, we tried to split it up into three separate divisions, and we did it by GP. Um, it worked well. But there were some tweaks in there that we felt we could have made, and that was what we did with season two. So with season two, what we've done is we've split up the uh, uh, entirety of division, uh, uh, the entirety of division one, which contains about fifty content creators that all either stream or post their GACs, and we split them down into four. Well, I say four divisions. Um, Technically, it's five, but the Premier League is based on their top 80 and merit. And all of the other Div 1 characters are split by GP and top 80 GP. So we're trying to make it as even as possible. So we have a Major League, a Triple A League, a Double A League, and a Single A League. As you can imagine, the Single A League, league people are that 4.5. They're around about 4.5 to 5, 5.1. And then the a double A league is around that 5.1 to around six. It's it's roughly that about a million. And then the triple A league is around about six, uh, six point two to seven, seven point two. And then the majors are um, six, about six point seven to seven point uh, seven point seven. With obviously Loki being the outlier because he's eight million. But what no, well, so Mandalore's eight as well, and Mandalore is eight as well. So we do have a couple of people with eight mil, but there's no we, we can't put them in a, a division of their own. But there are there is kind of like a slight overlap between the A, the a double A, the double A, and the triple A, and the triple A, yeah. and the major. In I've that got... some people might have a slightly lower GP, but they have a higher top eighty. Or yeah, they've I've got... got that right here. I've got that pulled up right now. The low end of the totem pole is in the major leagues is Nooch with a 2.1 top 80 and a 6.8 roster. And it goes all the way up to 2.4 for Heinze with a 7.6 roster. But of course, as you said, Loki has the 8.1 million roster sitting at 2.5 in his top 80 <laughs> along with Mandalore. Yeah. Now we've got, we've got to fit those high end content creators in somewhere. So they have to go in the top league. There's nowhere else that they can go. They had to go into the, uh, the top end. Um, now the, the triple a league, it's much more close. It's much closer because it's two mil, uh, 2 million in their top 80 to 2.2. There's no 2.3s in the in the top 80 of the triple a one right below major league the triple a league and that's where i'm sitting at six point well i'm now 6.5 with a two mil gp average <laughs> um and it's a lot i mean all this is this is going to be fun and if we can get more matchups that is where 
what you proposed in your Dear Doja Fett video would come in handy for content creators and guild members. It would be a big public service. Yes, it probably would be a lot of work, but you put a lot of work into the design of what you put in there. Yeah. Um, the, 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 and that would be to, to be able to create a personal matchup. Yeah, you versus another person. Real Go ahead and give people. your rundown for those that haven't watched your YouTube video, yeah, Dear sorry. Doja Fett, of, of customized GAC matchups. So real-time PvP it, it, it is something that we've been screaming out for this game, but you need a workable framework for real-time PvP. Now, we've seen Squad Arena real-time PvP on other games, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. We saw it in DSA. It didn't work. Real-time PvP in, DV in, in Disney Sorcerer's Arena did not work. There is real-time PvP in Marvel Strike Force, but it involves handicapping your opponent before you go in. Real-time PvP in uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes would be feasible, and it would be very, very possible and very enjoyable, but not Division or League-related if they took the the GAC element and brought that to the table as PvP. So what I proposed as a live PvP format for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes is one round of GAC. Um, now, it, as you look at the user interface, for some strange reason, the Shard Store has got its own area on the user interface. You take that out and you make that the live PvP but you make it GA. So you go into that and it brings up, um, it would bring up the, the, the interface for finding friends. So, you know, so you would type in an ally code. It would bring up that character. You would then select what type of um, live PVP GA uh, Grand Arena round you want, whether it's 3v3, 3v3 with fleets, 5v5 or 5v5 with fleets. And then you would click send. And that would issue the challenge to another person that you will want to do a live PvP um, GAC round with. You take about 15, you, you give it about 15 minutes for it to be accepted. Once it's, at, once it's accepted, the match then starts. You get 30 minutes to then set your defenses and then you get an hour to do your battle. But it would be live. Literally, it would be there live. Um, and it would be PvP. I mean, sure, they could throw some rewards in there or they could make it so that the rewards were by the players themselves. I, I like the idea of, you know, people, you know, giving each other the rewards because then um, CG would still be making money because people would spend crystals to buy gear that they could then use to... Um, uh, uh, wager against someone, you know, so they'll wager a stun gun against each other, or they'll wager, you know, a stun cuff, you know, if, if, if they wanted to bring prizes or if they wanted to bring rewards into it, the reward itself would be just being able to do live PVP, a GAC round, not a great big, you know, not eight people and spreading it out over a week just a random event that occurs in an hour and that is how i think live pvp would work in star wars galaxy of heroes take one round of grand arena and make it live pvp but let the people in the community and let the players themselves choose who they want to challenge and who they want to fight so here's my thought on i i don't like when when, when you initially brought it up I'm not a fan of your wagering system, you know, wagering the, the stun gun, um, because that can be abused because you can select who your opponent is. You could be transferring stun guns to, to people. I think that spending ally points, you know, those things that you use to buy the bronziums? Yeah. S using those to be able to do this sort of thing would be a way, you know, it, yes. Big country mag says I do it for free for practice. Yeah. I, I agree with you, but there has to be a way there has to be something enticing for EA to want to spend money on it because money would 
they want to make money on this ability. Do they, do they, God forbid, release a fighter pass to be able to play this? No, here's the thing. They would make money on it. Um, and the reason why I'm saying that they would make money, pe pe people in chat have said um, that theory crafters would use it. Um, and I agree that theory crafters would use it in order to theory craft teams. But what it allows high end players, people who are really, really into GAC to do is. So let's say for let, let's say that, that, you know, two people fight each other and a team that a person's working on loses or it doesn't quite make it they're then looking at that character going right okay damn you know didn't quite make it with gear 12 sod it i'll buy a chest and i will take them to gear 13 and then i'll go in and i'll try it, and then i'll do another gac challenge and i'll see if the upgrades to that character on that team have worked and then people will spend you know, the high-end gackers, the high-end, you know, those high-end Div 1 people will want to spend crystals to gear up and buff their G... Because think about it, think about it this way, right? If you've got live PvP for GAC, people would, for in all intents purposes, use it as a way to practice before GAC. And if they've got a team that they're working on, um, and they know that the team isn't just ready because they need to do, gear it up, it will then encourage them to go into the store, buy crystals, spend the crystals on gear so that they can really prepare a team for the GAC. So it's not, uh, it's not without merit for EA and CG to do something like this because they will make a boatload of money from people spending money, buying crystals to, you know shore up various different squads in a live pvp that they've tested so it's like right okay i've tried and tested that team now it only cost me an extra two thousand crystals worth of gear now i'm ready for gac i mean for us content creators we would love it because we would be able to do live matches and we would be able to do live streaming matches and we would be able to do tournaments knockout tournaments live stream knockout tournaments which would just be so awesome whether would be totally awesome, but the G, uh, CG and EA would make money on it because people would want to do that to their rosters. They would want to so, shore up teams. So, yeah, I mean, you, you make a really, really good point on the fact that we would be able to do tournaments. GA Center would be able to do playoffs. Um, but that's us thinking in a way kind of greedily. Here's where it makes sense for them is if you are able to fight a friend in this game, even if it's say once a week on, let, let's say Monday, Neil, let, let's say Monday after the, after GAC is, uh, that round is done, you have one free battle anybody you want that day. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, 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 you see, the, the, but, but hear, hear me out, hear me out. So they've got that. You're able to play against that. It would have more people streaming, more people communicating and therefore building this community even more. You cannot, you cannot tell us that the community in this game is not important. Because Discord is, you know, my guild is one of the reasons why I still play this game outside of I do a show about the damn game. <laughs> but my guild kept me going. With that being said, I would be communicating with guild members saying, hey, let's match up. Let's see what we can do. But there would be more people streaming content, streaming matchups against their friends, which gives more exposure to this game. They know the community is important. That's why they hired Doja Fett or promoted Doja Fett, if you will. Yeah, no, the, 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 here's the thing. I, I, in order for them to make lots of money on, a, uh, on an area of the game specifically created like this, they would need to make it limitless. 
but the streaming and the com the gaming community itself would be constantly streaming this. Somebody could literally start a live stream, all right, with 20 people in it, and they could be like, if your GP is similar to my, this is my top, this is my GP, this is my top 80. If you've got something similar, bring it. Challenge me. Let's see how good you are. And then that's it. It's streamed around. The, the, there would literally be hours and hours and hours. There would be dozens and dozens and dozens of content creators on Twitch and on YouTube just constantly streaming this. Constantly streaming this. And people would spend money on their rosters to get their <coughs> GPs and their top 80s level with the content creators so that they can go into the content creator's stream and challenge them to a single round of live PvP Grand I Arena. Just, that would I make just want to smash you, Neil. I, know I just want to beat smash you. Me. I know you just want to smash me, but that is... That's that's an inadvertent way that CG and EA would be making. Think 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 about think about this. Think about this in the biggest terms possible. Arnold, when Arnold is streaming, he gets between three and four thousand people stream uh, watching his live streams. If they had a live, and I do mean live PvP grand arena that he was doing, and there were two, three, four, five thousand people watching his stream, and he said. Bring it on, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take it, you know, I'll accept a challenge from somebody. There would be people in his stream that would deliberately spend money on their rosters to match Arnold's roster just for the chance to compete against him they in do. Grand Arena. They do. But they can't challenge him and play against him by choice. I directly. know, I know. If they had so a live PvP Grand Arena, people would be able to do that and they would spend hundreds if not thousands on their rosters just to challenge a content creator so cg and ea would generate a random revenue stream just from that all right and here's the thing i mean we could create a grand arena challenge network on exactly. top of that we could we could and, and we say would, we would we would get in you know we would bring more content creators in we would bring in a bigger production staff we would continue obviously ga center but you know um, uh, I know, you know, it's some, I know it's something that, uh, I know it's something that, uh, uh, Gridzy wanted to do. Gridzy wanted to try doing tournaments, but he just, he, he can't, you know, he does so many different things that he's found that, you know, not found the time to do it. You know, a, a, a collab yeah. with Gridzy and us and, you know, try, it, 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 everybody would be doing it. If, if yeah. they made Grand Arena, um, P, live PVP, it wouldn't just be us doing it. It would be everybody. It literally right. would be everybody. The Gambit crew would constantly be streaming against each other. Solo and it would be exposure for this game. Huh? And it would be exposure for the game. And it would be massive exposure for this game. Massive All exposure. Right. We, we are running long. We need to get to a break because on the other side, we're going to talk to Fighting Drunk, an ex-SWGOH uh, player who is a member of the Escape Pod Castaways. Uh, but we're going to find out what could possibly bring him back right after these messages right here on the Escape Pod cast. The Escape Pod cast with Paul Anthony and Neil Andrew Ware. Hello, Escape Padawans. It is the Llama here to remind you that the Escape Pod castaways are on social media. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, you can catch us on YouTube and on Twitch every week streaming Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, Lego Legacy Heroes Unboxed, your favorite new Galaxy of Heroes show, GA Center, and so much more. Come catch us on the web. Are you a member of Team Paul or Team Neil? Maybe you prefer story time with the llama, or dabble in the buttery side of the force with Biscuit Weasel. Or maybe you like the escape pod talents from Down Under, like Heinze and Scotty. No matter who you support, you can get one of my designs from the Escape Podcast merch store. Just go to escapepodcastaways.com, click on the merch link, and it will take you to the Tee Public site where you can support me, Mrs. Anthony, also known as Critty K. Also be sure to check out the Mrs. Anthony Shirts channel on the Escape Podcast's Discord server weekly to vote for my latest shirts in the Design Derby on Woot. Links for both of these are down below. Thank you for supporting the Escape Pod 
podcast. Pinesy from the ANZGC is officially a member of the Escape Pod Castaways. Make sure you go and search for Heinzy on YouTube today because he live streams a lot of his GAC content and not only does he do that, he also does some pretty fun videos from time to time including a behind the screen and also streaming Jedi Fallen Order. Ah, and from time to time, this idiot might drop by. Head on over and check out Heinzy today on YouTube, a part of the Escape Pod Castaways Network. Kids. It's really cool. Hello, Escape Padawans, and welcome back to Storytime with the Llama and the Escape Pod Cast for Kids. This week we are continuing right along in the Journey Guide, taking a look at characters that don't necessarily come from Journey Guide events, but come from other areas of the game. And this week we have my number two best prize character, and that is none other than General Kenobi. Now, you can obtain General Kenobi as a reward from the heroic tier tank takedown raid. Similarly to Han Solo last week, the better you do in the raid, the better your rewards, and the more General Kenobi shards you will receive. Like the heroic Rancor raid, this raid is fully simmable by your guild. So you're going to want to check if you join a new guild to see if they're simming it or if people can go in and go ahead and post damage and attack. If people are posting damage and attacking, I highly suggest you do that so you can get as many Kenobi shards as quickly as possible. If you're in a guild that sims it, well, everybody's gonna get the same. So you will just have to be patient and collect the shards as they come. Taking a peek at General Kenobi, he is a light side character, a tank, a leader, a Jedi, Galactic Republic, and a fleet commander. He does have a fleet ship, the Negotiator, it's fantastic. But we are here to look at Kenobi, not his ship. So his basic ability, Intuitive Strike, deals physical damage to the target enemy with a 75% chance to grant foresight to a random ally that does not already have it for two turns. If all allies are buffed, this move will actually deal double damage. His first special ability, the Negotiator, will dispel all debuffs from all allies and grant them the opposite buffs, if there are any, for two turns. All allies that were not debuffed gain Retribution for two turns, and General Kenobi gains 60% turn meter. His second special ability, Lead the Charge, deals physical damage to the target enemy and grants a random other ally offense up for two turns. This ability will also call all other buffed allies to assist, dealing 30% less damage. Jedi Knight Anakin and Ahsoka Tano are not affected by this damage penalty, so instead of dealing 30% less damage, they're actually going to be dealing 100% damage. Moving on to his leadership ability, the 212th Attack Battalion Commander, that one is a mouthful for sure. All Jedi and clone allies have plus 30% max health and plus 70% defense. After a Jedi ally uses a team healing special ability, all other allies at full health are called to assist, dealing 50% less damage. When a clone ally uses a special ability, they gain a buff. If they're an attacker, they get advantage. If they're a support character, they get stealth. And if they're a tank, they will obviously taunt for one turn. His unique ability, and excuse me if I do not pronounce this correctly, but I have no idea how to pronounce this, is called Sorisu. At the end of his turn, General Kenobi has a 65% chance to gain foresight for two turns. Whenever another ally is critically hit, if General Kenobi is alive, they gain critical hit immunity for one turn, and General Kenobi will taunt for one turn. If all allies are Galactic Republic, General Kenobi will taunt for one turn whenever another Galactic Republic ally loses any protection up. Kenobi has one Zeta and it is on his unique ability. When you're modding Kenobi, you're definitely going to want to give him a bunch of tenacity to help resist those debuffs that are put on by the other team so he can taunt and really defend the other people on the team. You are also going to want him pretty fast. You want him going a lot so he can be clearing debuffs and using his special ability to call allies to assist, especially if he's in a Galactic Republic team with Jedi Knight Anakin and Ahsoka because his synergy with them is awesome. 
Speaking of teams, his ideal team of choice is going to be a Padme-led Galactic Republic team. Kenobi does have a leadership ability, but you're not really going to use it much because he works better as a tank than he does as a leader. So a Padme-led team with Jedi and Anakin, with Ahsoka, throw C-3PO in there, and Kenobi, it's a really great team. You can also use him in a Jedi Knight Anakin-led Jedi team. He's wonderful in there with Jolie Bindo, Bastilla Sean, Grandmaster Yoda. And this is really the team where you're going to use Kenobi first because you're going to have these characters a little bit earlier than you will all of the Galactic Republic characters, especially Padme. She's a little bit more mid-game. But as soon as you have her, you can go ahead and slide Kenobi over and throw in maybe Hermit Yoda into your Jedi team or another Jedi to help fill the empty slot that's left after you move Kenobi into your Padme team. That's all for me. Tune in next week for more Storytime with the Llama and the Escape Pod cast for kids. Receiving incoming transmission. Receiving incoming transmission. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, welcome back to the show. It's our incoming transmission segment, and we have a guest. Paul, introduce our guest. All right, ladies and gentlemen, one of the first supporters of the Escape Podcast, and a very, very good friend of the show, and a member of the Escape Pod Castaways, who sadly left the game, but... We might be able to uh, we might be able to do something a little a little different with that, but stick around because some interesting uh, questions coming up here. Uh, he hails from the UK. He is so Neil's happy about that, and he is one of the meanest pirates upon the digital seas. We'll get into that as well, ladies and gentlemen. Not that kind of a pirate. Not that. <laughs> Not that kind of a pirate the other kind <laughs> welcome to the show fighting drunk fd how the hell you been man welcome it's been hello a guys time. matt I, I feel like I, I feel like i'm amongst gods right now oh come <laughs> on you're, like you're, you say, you're a great demigods demigods it, you know, yeah demigods you you were playing for Team Vasari in the Creator Cup last year. Yeah, um, good so, times. You know, um, Hellenix, By the way, thank you for the uh, three shiny nickels. You should um, throw just one nickel. Is all I'm going to say, Hellenix. You should check out what happens with just one nickel. Um, so FD, you used to play Star Wars: Galaxy of Heroes. That is correct. Do you have any um are, are you playing once in a while down the line? Or do you every once in a while log in? I haven't logged in in what, 4 months now. I've I've handed my account over to someone else and they're using it as an alt. So I do have the opportunity to get it back if and when I want. But that's being active. So it is an act it's yeah. an active account. It's just yeah, not, it's not playing. It. Somebody yeah, exactly. uses, someone's using it as an alt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if I ever did want to come back, it's not gonna be just left behind. It should be relatively up to date. Yeah. Uh, do, so. do you know I mean, do you know what they're doing with it? Are they murking it or are they just kind of like Keeping the work, keep, keeping the engine, you know, tick, keeping the engine ticking over like in a guild and, you know, just generally playing, uh, you know, all aspects of the game. Would you know if they're going like hard in one area or like um, I said, are, are, do you think, or are they just murking the So it's in their main guild because it's not a small account. I think it's six million GP. Hmm. Yeah, that's why it's I was got, asking if they were murking yeah. with it. So I, I think as far as I'm aware, it's in their main guild. They are doing everything they need to with it, but not focusing as hard on it as they would their own account. Mm -hmm. So 
it's probably lagging a bit behind, but nowhere near as behind as it would be if no one was using it. Yeah. Like like with Warrior's main account. Like when Warrior left, uh, uh, he didn't hand it over to somebody. It He just mothballed it. Um, and then obviously when he came back and he opened it up, it was like a sea of gear 12. <laughs> <laughs> with like a half a dozen to a dozen relics and now he's got three gls yeah in three months which is that guy's crazy bonkers. though that's you, you yeah just how just wow yeah i, I just wonder how much that has cost that well the thing is he, it, 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 he was able to get he, he was able to take that account and go straight into a decent guild and instantly start getting um, the rewards are necessary to get his slacker first, and then obviously the snowball effect of having the slacker first um, allowed him to, um, you know, get the heroic Sith raid um, rewards to be able to relic up other characters to get the other GL. So uh, from 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 a, it's not it's not like he was starting from nothing with that account. Yeah, just like the person that you handed the account over to um to, to to look after they wouldn't have been starting on that with they were starting from six million just as um warrior was starting his from like 6.5 he wasn't like having to farm for characters and then take them up to relics he was just taking already gear 12 and relic characters to the level necessary for um, yeah having the stars is half the battle with it yeah exactly like, that's the bit that even if you're spending money you still got to do the refreshes. You still got to get the drops. It takes time. Mm -hmm. The gear not so bad. Well, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> it depends how much crystals you get. Yeah, I can imagine he's not short on crystals. So, what was the reason that you decided to hang up your Galaxy of Heroes account, or or essentially hand it off? So. It was a few reasons, really. So when Urs left the game, he talked about why he was leaving. And one of the things he mentioned was it felt like he was in an abusive relationship with CG, where they keep saying stuff, not delivering. Then they'd throw him something. Like, we get a new character we wanted, but still not actually delivering more, not giving new stuff for us to do just using the same characters in the same ways. And that really starts me thinking. And then I got GL Ray. I got her quite quickly. She was good in arena. Then SLKR, good in PVE. Then Kylo got the buff. Ray ended up not being the better one in PVP or PVE. That kind of annoyed me. Because let's face it, the requirements to get her aren't good aren't as good either then that passed started farming for luke and it just started getting to me that so it was luke that broke the, all the farms that i got just seemed pointless and cg just not delivering anything it just yeah it just wasn't fun for me anymore so, so it was luke that broke you then that's GL Luke, not Jedi, or not the legendary event or whatever it was. The that hero, was I right. think it was a hero's journey, isn't it? A hero? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, so, that wasn't that bad. When you... How much thought into who you kind of handed it off to did you put into it or were did you just you know fling it at the wall and let whoever grabbed it off the wall grab it um i passed it to someone i trust someone i trust to play it and play it well um i didn't just see whoever wanted it it was thinking more who's actually going to use this who's going to get something out of it rather than who is available and I, I passed it to someone that I knew would use it well because them being a content creator, they're obviously going to want to have the good squads. Otherwise, it's going to make it a lot harder for them streaming it. 
No, I I definitely I definitely tip my hat to you in in this case because you did that that you know that it went to somewhere somewhere good, but you know what are you doing what are you doing with your time now? So I I started streaming four months ago five months ago now, and I'm just filling my time playing games that I can actually play. I don't have to wait for energy. I don't have to wait for GA to come up. I can play whenever I want for as long as I want. And things like Sea of Thieves recently or Valhalla when that came out, games like that find them much more enjoyable. And like I said, I can just play for as long as I want, which that appeals to me. So you were you were also playing South Park. Uh, what was it? Uh... <laughs> I've played both of them, the Stick of Truth and the Fractured Butt Hole. <laughs> Careful with the pronunciation on that yeah, one. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like the Escape Pod cast. Exactly. So, um, it's... You, you've played through both of those, and what has happened to to your viewers? You know, have have your viewers stuck around? Um, have, have they made the jump with you? Is it okay to play other games? <laughs> yeah. So the way I've built the channel is more about I'm a variety streamer. I'm going to stream different games. If you only like that one game, stop around for that, then move on. If you like me as a streamer, stick around. If you don't like the next game I'm playing, I'm sure I'll play one you like again in the future. So just try and build a viewer base based on that something where people aren't coming in expecting to see one game and one game only and i tend to stick with a game for about a month just something that i can really get into and it's not a i'm spending five minutes on one then switching to another then another i really get my teeth stuck in on something getting good at it and then moving on So, all right, let's, let's ask about, you know, your name's fighting drunk. Yes. How, how, how often are you streaming drunk? <laughs> <laughs> when I first started, it was a few times a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, that was not good to keep up though. Uh, more recently, it's like once every couple of weeks, maybe. All right. So off the, off the top of your head, um, what is yep. you know what's what's your favorite thing to uh, <laughs> to, to drink? Uh, off the top of my head, uh, I love Peroni beer. If you've ever had that, it's great. Italian beer, just perfect. But if I'm going for harder stuff, you got to have a good scotch. <laughs> I have a nice scotch collection. Got a bottle of thirty-year-old recently. It's delicious. If, if okay, but if if you're not if you're not streaming drunk, what are you drinking instead? It's normally beer for me. Just, We're Brits. We I, drink beer. Yeah, lager and beer. So we do. Uh, I, I thought I thought you guys drank tea. We do drink tea, but I thought we were talking booze right now. Yeah, we're talking booze right now. <laughs> It's white but beater all the way. It's Stella Artois. No, no, Neil. Yes. <laughs> Dude, seriously, it's... if you came here and you drank the stuff you were forced to drink over here, you would be begging for Stella Artois. Trust Fair me. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Give me Stella. Give me Cronenberg. Give me... Um, Cronenberg. That is a good give one. Me, give, me, give me some Bex. Um, I mean, there is, oh, God, I, will say one, I, will say, I will say one thing. I will say one thing. Budweiser in the UK tastes crap. For some strange reason, it's actually tasty over here. Fair it's, enough. It's, kind, it's, the, it's the weird thing. It's like McDonald's in the UK, good. McDonald's in the US, bad. Budweiser <laughs> in the UK, bad. Budweiser in the US, good. It's because um, it's from the US, though. Yeah, it's and, not and they, imported. They don't know how to do cider to save their lives over here. They nah. really, really don't. They just don't. I mean, I, 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 I crave for a strongbow or a dry blackthorn. Oh. 
I, do, I mean, Alco Pops. I mean, they're, they're not too bad for Alco Pops over here. Um, but who drinks them? But yeah, exactly. You know, I... so. Uh, but they're good. I mean, they they do get a lot of the. I mean, so does the UK. The the Shwe the sh the Swedish um, <laughs> ciders um, that we got. You know, um, the Cronen uh, Cronenberg. Copperbergs. Uh, Copper, sorry, Cronenberg, Copperberg, and um, <laughs> Copperberg variants. Yeah, they, they get all of those imported over here, so they're just like stupidly like twice the price over here as they are in the U in the UK. Oh, but they do get with that. they do get some in. They, they so, have to import cider well, though, because like I I've, said, their cider. I've terrible. been to the states once though, and I tell you, Guinness was my go-to drink there. Because like you said, the beer's rubbish. Guinness is quite consistent, whichever country you go to. It's quite a safe bet, mm -hmm. and I do I do like a pint of Guinness. Not as much as I like my tea, but mm. let's face it, British. I've got to love my tea. Yeah, no, no. See, Penguins fan Grolsch is nice, but it's only nice in Germany. I, it's not good. I don't really it's not drink good it over much. here. I don't think Grolsch is that good over here. But if you get Grolsch from mainland Europe, it's really, really nice. Hmm. Mm -hmm. See, Heineken's another good one. Like, it's better in Central Europe. In the UK, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, and, and let's let's avoid the Fosters discussion because, you know, Heinze has spies everywhere. Yeah, we don't want to hurt his feelings, do we? <laughs> yeah. We know how much know, he likes we, it. We, 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 yeah, we don't want to hurt his feelings about how much he loves the Fosters. It just tastes he like the Castle so. Mate 4 x you know. Like Foster's is just cornflakes. Yeah, rubbish. It's, it's, it's the it's the you know it, it's not even the breakfast of champions. You know, no, that would be zambuca. <laughs> oh no, tequila. Yes. Zambuca so, is the breakfast of champions. Tequila. No, although they do make pretty good tequila over here. All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway. I mean, we're in North America, um, you know. Mexico has some some wonderful Mexico and Austin. Um, Tito's handmade vodka from Austin is, uh, from what I understand, a very very good uh, good nightcap, if you will. Um, so, uh, what what is next on your radar for for games, FD? You know, you you've been you've been looking at a few, you've been you you did the South Park. You did you did uh, you did Human Fall Flat, which was hilarious. I, I love that game. Do that. Uh, what what's next? Um, what what how what are you going to recap next? So I haven't really thought about new games because I'm still quite into Sea of Thieves at the moment. But one game that I really do want to do at some point is Skyrim. <laughs> I, I I'm going to hold my hands up right now. Never played it. And I'm expecting people to hate me for that. But having not played it, I think streaming it would be great fun. Because I know a lot of people love that game. And a lot of people would want to watch someone play it for the first time. Experience it for the first time. And learn to love it like they love it. Plus, I got the VR version. So if I can get that working... For some reason, it doesn't want to show it in full screen that on stream, which is a bit of a pain. Uh, I'm, a I'm sure that I, I'm sure that there would uh, Neil would love to have you learn Lemmings. Oh, okay. Lemmings is a great game. I've been uh, the, the last two Saturday streams that I've done drunk. I've ended the stream <laughs> after doing my dailies on Lemmings, and I've been absolutely blotto. Lemmings, so much fun drunk. It's free on I Windows, mate. It. Download it. Is it? Yes, it's free. I, I'm resisting the urge to it's do it free. right now. J, 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 J Manners was on stream. He's in chat. JJ Manners was on stream with me, drinking with me while we were doing it. And I'm oh, like, they're like, perfect. JJ, what do we do? Do we dig? Do we blow them up? Do we dig oh, down? Do we use block? It's brilliant. It was so much fun. And, so and the question entertaining is when you're drunk. How much were you trying to complete the level and how much were you just trying to screw with them? No, I was trying to do every single one, but that's what, and, and but the intoxication made it all the more fun because, you know, it's really hard to concentrate on, you know, 
a million lemmings on the screen all at once <laughs> when you're half cut. But that's what made it so much fun. I had more people, more people watching me in stream <laughs> while I was drunk doing lemmings than while I was doing my dailies. Dang. So, well, let's face it, Lemmings is a classic, though. Drunk Lemmings. Everyone telling you, mate, Lemmings. it was a winner. First time I did it, I had like 25, 30 people watching me. Nice. Slurring my language and getting really, really irate at the Lemmings. on Because I was, I was, I was proper, I was proper never aging oh. at these, because they just wouldn't cooperate. There'd be glitches. I'm, th there's glitches in the game. That just Perfect. so you're like, so they're walking along, they're walking along, and then all of a sudden it just disappeared, and it's like, what, what? is going on? And I'd start screaming uh, at the t yeah. So I highly recommend Lemmings. See, I can imagine it'd be frustrating drunk, it uh, is sober. So Sorry, sober. Dr the first twenty Let levels alone drunk. First twenty levels drunk are easy. Everything after level twenty, <gasps> yeah, you you just. Start I, I feel your like rap. that's a challenge right now. Mm-hmm. Do I've got to try and do level 20 plus yeah. drunk. Yeah. It ain't easy. All right. I would get I, halfway through a level and go. go. I would get halfway through a level. Yeah, sorry. I can't be bothered with this anymore. I'd quit, reload the game, pick another level, try that, <laughs> fail, pick another level, try it, fail. I don't think I've, I haven't, com I don't think I've completed anything after level 20 because it just gets so hard when you're drunk. Oh, Matt, I really want to <laughs> so, give that a go now. I need to go get beer. So, like, well, I've got well, none right uh, now. <laughs> well, you, you, we we'll, we have a few more minutes with you here before you run off to go get that beer. But I want you to put your thinking cap on and think of some more, uh, more ones for uh, Neil to play while he's drunk. Games to play drunk. I, I because you're, say... you're the expert at playing games drunk. I think the best games to play drunk are the simple ones. Things they like are, yeah. Fall Guys, things like Phasmophobia, where you don't really have to think, but being able to think does help a bit. I, I need to be able to enjoy the game sober first. and I, Yeah, you've got to know what you're fall, doing. Fall Guys and Phasmophobia, I'm not interested in, so I'd be even more disinterested in them uh, drunk. I think I'd probably just be like, yeah, whatever. That's fair. I'd do a Yeti. No, that's exact. No, I would pass <laughs> out. I would do a Yeti. Ooh. If I was playing something I was not interested in drunk, I would allow my set. My body would just, my brain would allow my body to pass out. Dang. I don't <laughs> so, think I've ever played a game and thought that. <laughs> well, we are, uh, we are coming up on the, on the very end here. We're sadly running out of time. Starcraft. Star, we do, we do need to get StarCraft two going. You and I, we we still need to do um and Warcraft to, and Ages uh, of Empires. So yeah, we were to 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 Larry. I've heard there's a new version of that coming out. That yeah. sounds fun. Yeah, that could be fun. Drunk. I think <laughs> so, that'll be fun. However, you all want. right. Uh, so how do people find you, FD? What you know, somebody wants to if, if they're. If they're not looking at show notes and they're just listening, how do people find you? So they find me at twitch.tv forward slash fighting drunk, or you'll see me in the escape pod cast discord server and another of another there, a load other. Yeah, I just can't talk right now. It's a, it's early morning. A, it, it, a load it, of other discord servers. Us. Yeah. It's stupid o'clock in the morning where it's you are. 3 it's 3 a.m. for me right now. Yeah. But I'm in a load of Discord servers, but twitch.tv forward slash fighting drunk or the escape pod cast Discord server are probably the best ways to find me. Yep. You you are also in the coalition of obsessed gamers with Vasari. Yeah. And, and and a few other people. Do you want to shout them out real quick? Yeah. It's, uh, it's only the three of us. It's myself, Vasari Games, and Nightcon. So Nightcon hasn't come from Swagger. He is someone that I've played Xbox with for years used to rinse all the kids on call of duty back in the day i say kids i was one of the kids at that point but we'll brush <laughs> over that <laughs> so fi final question and then we'll let you go get that beer what will it take to get you back in star wars galaxy of heroes so when you first said you were going to ask this i thought my answer was going to be you're not going to get me back 
Having thought about it a bit more, I think there's probably one thing that would get me back. The end, by the way, <laughs> I think the one thing that would get me back is the ability to play the game whenever I want. I want to be able to just go on my phone and play. I don't want to be limited by energy, limited by the number of times I can do an event. I just want to be able to play, like do things like the rank or raid to practice. I don't have to be getting rewards every time. I just want to be able to do what I want when I want. Would like would, would, that, would, would, would a I grand do. arena, would live PvP interest you? Would live PvP bring <sighs> you back to the game? So like you said, you want to be out of play so you can just log on, fight, you know, fight. Oh, oh I, want to, I want to play right now. Does anybody want to do like, you know, does anybody want to do a, a, a one single round of grand arena with me right now? So, so you log in probably... and do it. It would get me watching more Swagger again. It probably wouldn't get me playing because it's a lot of this GAC. It's the same teams versus the same teams most of the time. It's it's not doing anything different. Yeah, but playing a friend. To... You'd be able to play a friend. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't feel like that would get me back. No, mm. okay. No, I feel like it would take a lot to get me back, to be honest. And All right. Honestly, I don't see it happening. <laughs> well, Especially now they lost the license. They they didn't lose the license. Well, it's just EA is not exclusive up. anymore. That's yeah. all it is. Lost the exclusivity. I should have said. Yes. Yeah. So I, I'm excited to see what games do come out. All right. Well, guys, make sure you go check out Fighting Drunk. Just Google. You know, just look up Fighting Drunk on Twitch. You're gonna find it. All one word. He, he was lucky enough to actually get his real handle, which is great. Um, but make sure you check him out. Lots of fun. And uh, toss, him, toss him a few bits or a subscribe here or there. He He's worth it. He is one of the streamers who I absolutely say he's worth it. Coming up, grab your friends. We're going to go over the tail of the tape after we answer the Patreon's only questions. We're going to talk about what's coming up and then after uh, with the Urza versus Zareth match. And we will send you to it if you're watching us live. Stick around right here on the Escape Pod cast. The Escape Pod cast with Paul Anthony and Neil Andrew Ware. Does your guild want to tap into their full potential in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes? Yeah! For as low as $1 a month per guild member, your guild can unleash the power of the game in ways you never thought possible. Ooh. Track your arena movements, guild progression, and much, much more. Ah. Contact Shitty Bill and get one of his shitty bots on your server today. Just look for him on our Discord server and tag or message him for more information. The link for our server is below in the description. Shitty bots, don't let the name fool you. Did you know that if you signed up to become a Patreon, you could get tons of rewards? Force Go Scotty could do a roster review for you. Neil Andrew Air could share Grand Arena tactics. Or Paul could even help you get maximum stars in Geonosis Territory Battle. Ah, and you even get access into the after show. Sound good? Sign up to be a Patreon today. For as little as $2 a month, you could unlock a ton of potential content and also get closer to the hosts. Head to patreon.com backslash the escape pod to sign up. And now time for something completely shameless. Time to rest, hellio old boy. Mm. Mm. Yes. <clears throat> rest. Hellenix. Yes. <clears throat> rest. Hellenix. <sighs> what noob? Happy new 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 year. Me, 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 bag. Yeah, yeah, noob. Happy yet another revolution around our star day. Whatever. Go away. Come on, Hellenix. It's time to celebrate. New beginnings. Come on, noob. But... You know I don't partake in waste of time, fabricated holidays that make no logical sense... But... ...and are little more than remnants of an archaic past. But... They're a waste of time and energy. But... And I don't like them. But... Everyone celebrates the... New no, 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 Year. Hellenix, it's a widespread tradition throughout the galaxy. I don't care, droid. 
I'm tired. I want to rest. And I want you to go away. I know. I will start the, 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 the S2E8 protocol. The what now? Protocol. Enacted. What, what, what's the problem this time, Hellenix? Oh, jeez. And why don't you want to celebrate the... New Year. Seriously? Hellenix, I, I, I know you're not motivated to create new content anymore, but as the saying goes, the show... Must go on. Oh, jeez. Noob? Yes, Hellenix? Go away. Seriously. But... No buts about it, mister. I just want to be left alone. I need some me time. Lennox, I'm just trying to... Cheer you up. And get you back into the holiday spirit. Well, I was never in the holiday spirit to begin with, droid. Um, Lennox? Ugh. You know, you're really starting to annoy me now, noob. Go away. Do whatever it is you want to do. Just leave me out of it. No. <sighs> You know, all I want to do is rest, noob. Don't read too much into it. I'm just tired. I'm exhausted, frankly. And I never celebrate New Year's anyway. Just go away and do whatever it is you want to do. Just leave me alone. Hellenix, we must do the skit. It requires a PSA. And we need a dramatic turn of events right at the end of this episode because it's the penultimate episode of the season. <sighs> no arguing. Meatbag. Now... Where were we? Oh, yeah, New Year's is a time for new beginnings. New beginnings are essential. We must fulfill our obligations, etc., etc., and... You know what that, that, that means. Oh, dear God, Droid, what do you think you're doing? You guessed it, Hellenix. I, N, zero, zero, B, have a short PSA that can help... You... Understand. This isn't how any of this is supposed to go down, noob. This, this, this PSA is brought to you by N, zero, zero, B, and the escape pod cast... Merch store. Hashtag shameless self promotion. Visit our merch store to get some awesome stuff. Doing so helps continue producing this show, ensuring many more episodes to come in the foreseeable future. New beginnings. What are they? Why do they keep happening? And who stands to benefit? In, in, in this Swaga PSA, we will explore new beginnings and the many myths that surround them. All things have a beginning, a middle, and an end. <laughs> This is the natural progression of things. At least, that's what the organics keep telling me. While we droids do not experience life cycles the same way that... Meat bags. ...do, we too ponder the uncertainty of new beginnings from... Time to, to, to time. Are new, new beginnings a good thing or a bad thing? Today, we will try to navigate these... Muddy waters. ...and determine when to look forward to a fresh start and, more importantly... When it should be avoided. We've all seen it. The new year rolls around and folks all over the galaxy begin making resolutions. Some say they'll get in shape. Others say round is a shape. Still, others ask What are shapes? Noob. Okay, maybe that didn't make too much sense. Perhaps I shall word it like so. New, 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 new beginnings can be beneficial for your mental health. They allow you to begin a new chapter in your life with a clean slate. Wiping away all the negativity of the past and refocusing on an optimistic and encouraging aspect for your future. Thus, new beginnings can be a great thing. Indeed. Making changes in your life should be done because you want the positive benefits that come from said changes to become a reality. What you don't, don't, don't want to do is make changes just for the sake of making changes. Your objective should be to enhance and improve your life, helping you to accomplish more goals than ever before. However, you should also be realistic, realizing that these changes may not come quickly nor easily. Making these changes can be accomplished if you A. Make a commitment to yourself to follow through with the changes. B. Understand that there may be knock-on effects from these changes and C. Believe in yourself and your ability to make the necessary changes happen. Remember, this is your life. Take ownership of it and move steadily along the path that you wish to travel. After all, life is a journey full of twists and turns. Exotic planets. Gravitational anomalies. Space turbulence. And malfunctioning hyperdrives. One can never be fully prepared for what lies ahead. But if you want to travel on a previously uncharted hyperspace lane, you can't allow fear and uncertainty to stop you from realizing your dreams. Only you can make the journey of your life the most exciting adventure imaginable.
This has been N zero zero B for the escape pod cast hashtag shameless self promotion and new beginnings because that's what New Year's is all about. Wow, these, these, these PSAs really are harder to make than I give Hellenics credit for. So, do you see now, Hellenics? Wasn't that PSA helpful? Noob. Yes, Hellenix? Go away. No. Instead, may I show you something that I've been working on for the last few weeks? Noob, if it makes you go away, then yes, fine, I guess, whatever. Show me what you got. Excellent. In honor of new beginnings, I proudly present to you a newly refurbished and fully functional TC. Fourteen. Ah! Master! TC fourteen. Why? I bet y'all didn't see that. The escape pod past the bridge. And welcome back to the end of the show, where we do Patreon's questions and generally a little bit more about things that are, have happened, are going to happen. Paul, what have we got in the final segment? Well, I'm trying to make sure that uh, that fighting drunk uh, gifting Zaz a uh, Zaz a a sub. Thank you, FD, for the uh, <laughs> for passing along that sub. Um, so I, I just was uh, communicating with Zareth. He says that he is going to go live in 20 or soon thereafter. I told him no soon thereafter. We got a, <laughs> we can't rate a dead channel. So, uh, let's go. Patreon's choice. Patreon's only questions. Here we go. Uh, four strong asks, how many lows could Roblo rob if Roblo could rob lows? He tried to tongue twist me. A lot. He, could, I'm he tried sure to tongue twist me, lot. but I I read that one all the time when I host my trivia nights. All right, uh, Geek Girl. I think uh, some of these we've we've been asked before. We'll try to give different answers. Um, your favorite sci-fi fantasy book that's not Star Wars. Uh, sci-fi fantasy, yeah, not Red just fantasy. Red Dwarf. Red Dwarf. Um. Hmm. I'm going to have to say Oh, what's the name? Blade Runner. The it. novelization of Blade Runner. What is a good book by a bad author that you liked? I think I did answer that one before. It was Arena from uh in the Magic the Gathering <laughs> um oh. series of books. Hang on a minute. Was wasn't the question an author? Sorry, hang on. What was the? I, I thought it was an author. What's a good book by a bad author? Oh, what's a good book? Right. Okay. A good book by. Oh, right. Okay. A good book by a bad author. Um. A good book by a bad author. I, I'd say that the the. Uh, I'd say the um. Oh. The oh. I literally just had the book on the tip of my tongue then. I'll, I'll ask the next question. If I'm not thinking about it, the book will come and, back Well, to me. it's also the same one here. Um, what's a really badly written book that you liked? And once again, bad author. But it, you know, it was fun. Badly written book, but... A, um... Well, I mean, there the, the was, I mean, there's, um, the, there have been numerous Star Wars books that are bad, but the author is good because they've also written good. So I would say, uh, Kathy Tyers, because she's written some really good Star Wars books. And then I've got to some, you know, the, the, there's these, it's a bit like TV shows and movies. Sometimes, you, you know, you, you'll watch a series and you'll think it's a good series, but every now and then there's like one or two episodes that you just think, my God, 
you know that that was a bit that was a bit below par for you um uh, uh and and you're like but i still like you and respect you despite the fact that you wrote a bit of a stinker you know so uh because she's wrote some brilliant star wars books but there was a couple of stinkers in there all right what's a album that you liked from an artist you usually don't like um I don't uh well i'd say i i would say um bono from you too sunday bloody sunday but i don't i don't like the artist i can't stand him for, but for I, me but i like i like his music i love his music i would have to say alanis morissette's jagged little pill album great album just not a fan of alanis, alanis morissette, morissette. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not a fan of Madonna, but um, I, know, I probably just pissed off awesome. Dickie Darkside and Andy Beads, but you know, yeah, no, 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 oh. Madonna. I like Madonna's albums, but I don't like Madonna. <laughs> what's What's the best live album? Ooh, um, Stone Temple Pilots Unplugged. I, I'd go Nirvana Unplugged. All right, both the Unplugged series. All right, four more questions, and then we'll get into uh, the tale of the tape with Zareth. Make sure you get everybody over here so we can go raid Zareth. We want to send him a huge party for this matchup against Urz. Uh, JJ Manners asks, if they bring Han Solo into the new Lando show, who should play Han? Well, I mean, if they're going to stick with... Um... If they're going to stick with the actor from the Solo movie for Lando, then they're going to have to stick with the Han Solo from the Han Solo movie. I agree. Otherwise, All the nine it just wouldn't make any sense. But, but, and I still think it's important um, to incorporate into it the original um, Billy D. Williams. Not and visually, but from a narrator point of view. To do I the agree. exposition. I agree. Just what like the just like the young you... Indiana Jones Chronicles. <laughs> what food have okay? So I guess this is a two parter. What food have you eaten to excess that you're ashamed and that you're proud of? I've said this before. I will sit there and eat as many hot mama bread from Rosie's in Toledo, Ohio, that you could put in front of me. I will sit there and eat it all day long. What I'm ashamed of, I would probably have to say, bagel bites. Um, anything really, uh, shrimp, but we like to call them prawns because that's what they really are. They're prawns. Um, they're not shrimp, they're prawns. Um, I, I can sit and eat them for like forever. Same with donuts. I, I don't need to be hungry to eat those things. Um, so yeah, shrimp, but the donuts would be the ashamed thing because I, I can, I can plow through a half a dozen donuts and, and think be, be like oh for god's sakes why didn't i just have two today two tomorrow and two the day after instead i ate them all in one go jj asks if you could transport a band from the past what band do you uh do you think you would choose and why okay uh, so for me i would have to actually say and i i know it's cliche I would say one of the answers would be the Beatles because their sound was a little bit ahead of their time. I'd like to see what they would do with it now. But if it was a band that had a futuristic sound that shaped things, yes, the Beatles did that, but um, Leonard Skinner, or not Leonard Skinner. Yeah, for me, it would be Dire Straits. Who's, I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to remember the name. Dire Straits is a good one. Um, okay, Greta Van Fleet sounds like another band, and I'm trying to remember who that is. It might be Leonard Skinner. I might be right on that. Um, but yeah. If I'm, if I'm right that it's Leonard Skinner, that Greta Van Fleet, because if you listen to Greta Van Fleet, it certainly has the sound of who I'm thinking is Leonard Skinner in my mind right now, but I digress. Last uh, question from the uh, CG Mole. 
if you could wail on one character in the last year, who would it be in the Can't Be a Galactic Legend? Well, I mean, it, I've, I've, already got, I've already got my Relic 7 JKL on my main and my main alt. So. But if I didn't, I'd, wait, I'd you know, if I, just, if I was starting from scratch, I'd, it'd, be J, it'd be JKL. Without a doubt, straight away. Boom. But I suppose, no, I, I would go with Nest. I could wail right now on somebody because my Nest's gear well, 11 they have on to my have been main. the past year. All right. Okay. None of them. Oh, all right. Actually, Chupio. I'd wail on Chupio. Because Ch I'm, still, I'm still farming Chupio on both my main and my alt. So, yeah, if I could wail on one of... Yeah, if I could wail on Chupio right now, yeah. Yeah, I would wail Chupio. I agree. I did. But for the purposes of this answer, it would be Moff Gideon. I would love to have wailed on Moff Gideon. All right. That does it for that. Now, what we're going to be doing here, we're going to be raiding Zareth when he goes live in about 10 minutes. When we do that, he will be facing off against Urzatron. I let's let's give them a little bit of a preview. You have the um, defenses of Urza, or no, you have the defenses of Zareth pulled up, right? I've I've got all of them. I've got I've got both both sets of defenses in front of me. Yeah. Well, I was trying to frame it for the people that uh, that were listening. <laughs> I I have Urz's uh, lineup on the top. On the top, he is currently fielding. Uh, this is Urzatron doing this, and then we'll throw to your top so you you can set the stage for that. Urzatron is fielding General Grievous, L three. And Enfys Nest. Both L3 and Enfys are Relic 3, and Grievous is Relic 7. All of them have all of their Zetas. Then he has some Relic Bounty Hunters with a Django lead, Bosk, and Boba, 4, 4, and 2, respectively, with their Relics. Finn. Finn. And Lands End Poe. Is um is the third one on Urza's top, uh top here. Here's the problem. His original fin doesn't have the Zeta, Neil. No, it doesn't. Have the and then Zeta. And then uh, um, and then finally, a uh, light side Basti lead with the Zeta Relic Three, Relic Four Ezra, no Zeta. And an Ala Sakura Relic 2. So that is what you guys will be seeing on defense from Urz on the top. What do you got over there for Zareth? Well, Zareth's gone um, a mixture of light, light side and dark side. So he's got, uh, he's put his G, he's put a, a standard Geo team down. Uh, Brute, Sunfak, uh, Spy, uh, Relics 4, 5, and 4. Uh, so that's going to cause us problems um, because I don't think he's got, uh, I don't believe Urz has got uh, Relic Treya. So uh, he's going to have to get interesting with that. He's, uh, he's running with uh, uh, Dooku lead, which is... We have seen him, we have seen him successfully Utini bomb before. Yes. But he that he's got he's got the Utini bomb on his account, not his alt. Ah, uh. he's only got one relic Jawa on his alt account. All of the others are still purple, eleven or below. Um, just it's just the uh, the Jawa scavenger that's relic on the alt. So the Utini bomb is the Utini bomb might not cut it against those geos, and Zara's gonna know that. Uh, anyway, where was it? Yeah, okay, so he's got a Relic 6 Dooku with a Relic 6 Droidica and a very, very, very cheeky 
Relic 7 um, Stormtrooper Han, um, which is going to taunt like a mother. Um, yeah, that, uh, that's a really, really clever, that's a really, really clever defensive um, team, I think. And then, same as uh, Urza, he's got Fin Fin Po. But this Fin, uh, the old school Fin, does have the leader, Zeta. Uh, they're, they're all Relic 5, uh, but uh, obviously, you know, um, uh, Zareth's Fin defensive team has got a little bit more bite to it than... Uh, uh, Urza's, and then right there at the bottom, standard Padme, Anakin, GK defensive team, um, all Relic 7 with their Zetas, with the exception of Padme. Padme is only Relic 5, but she does not need to be Relic 7. We know this. Uh, that Relic 7 uh, GK is going to cause him no end of problems. So, you know, you mentioned that it's 555 five, five for the Popo Finn. Urzes are sevens for the uh, Lands End Bros. Ah, yeah, but but um, Urz does not have the leadership Zeta on. I know, it, I know. That I'm, is going to make point, a pointing massive out they're gonna difference. Be a, they're going to be a little thicker though, so that has a very small chance of tipping an outcome because somebody didn't die. I mean, I, I think that both those teams will get one shotted by Urza and Zareth. Uh, I I just think that Zareth's defensive lineup has a better chance of stealing more banners than Urza's does. All right. All right. So now we go down to the bottom for uh for Urza. Urza has R2 D2 behind a it's CLS. Not, yeah, it's not alt versus alt. It's not alt versus alt. No, no, alt? this is Zareth's main. Oh this is I thought this was no, no, no. This is Zareth's main, Urza's alt. Okay. Um, okay, that, still interesting. <laughs> still interesting here. Um, CLS led R2-D2 with Chupio. Chupio is Relic 7 with the Zeta. So is R2-D2 with two Zetas. And CLS is Relic 6, all three Zetas. Then he enough. has Rex 5's C3PO. Everybody, um, I don't know what Zeta his C3PO has. I think 3PO has two Zetas, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got two Zetas. Yeah, so I'm not sure which of the two he has for 3PO, but that 3PO is Relic 5, and Rex and 5's are 7. I'm I'm gonna guess that it's the it's the relic for the Galactic Republic and not the relic for the Rebels and the Ewoks. You mean Zeta, but still Zeta, yeah. It's gonna be the Zeta for the Galactic Republic. It's the Galactic Republic Zeta. <laughs> I'm thinking so too. Yeah. But then this is where Urza possibly has tripped up. He's placed his Jedi Master Luke. Doesn't. Jedi Master Luke have six Zetas? Um, I think they all do, yeah. So he's, he's missing a Zeta. He's missing a Zeta, but he's also got Kenobi and, and her, um, Hermit Yoda. That's, that is Hermit Yoda. Yeah. He's got Kenobi and Hermit Yoda. Hermit Yoda, Relic 5. So oh, we're not eight. seeing any Relic 8s. No. What does Zareth have on the bottom there? Zareth's bottom is um, JKL, standard full boat, Relic 7, but, uh, two Zetas. Um, then we've got Shaq T and Old Ben, both with their Zetas, but only at Relic 5. Not that I think it's going to make much difference because it is a Relic 7 JKL. And uh, uh, Zareth's JKL is pretty buff. Then we've got that trickiest of tricky, the CLS 2PO C3PO, which standard. Uh, th there are a lot of counters coming out for that now. There are a lot of counters coming out for that these days. Um, but they are all Relic 5, and they do have the Zetas. So, it, you know, uh, I think that the counters are only going to work 
if they are of uh, probably of equal relic level. And then the standard FU, Darth Revan, Malik, Bastilla. All Zated, all Relic 5. That is... It doesn't... Anywhere, anywhere you put it, unless you're hitting that with a slacker, it's a double tap. Anywhere you look at that, that is a double tap unless you use your slacker. And since we haven't seen Urza's slacker on defense, he's probably saved that specifically because um, looking at Zareth's history... And knowing that Zareth puts the uh, the Dreven team down, that'll be why he's probably kept his slacker, so that he can single tap that team. It is certainly going to be a battle of the best. Mm -hmm. Oh God, yeah, no, this is going to be this is going to be your, that. That's why you know if the, the, you know Zareth's going to be playing this in you know all serious. And now that he now that he knows. That uh, uh, now that he knows that Fruit, Gin Fruit Ninja Mike has dropped the round, he's going to want this even more. He is going to want this even more, knowing that he could, uh, you know, get a one round lead um, uh, in the Premier League over Fruit Ninja Mike. He's going to want this. He's really, really, really going to want this. This is not well, going to be over soon. This well, is gonna I, be have, two uh, I have just gotten the alert. Zareth has gone live. Let's go ahead and uh, get ready to go over there. Neil, um, you know, Neil and I will provide a little bit of, a, of commentary and play-by-play -play in the after show. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys are interested, this is going to be an awesome, awesome night. Get ready for two... Don't worry about Conor McGregor and Poirier in the UFC tomorrow. Yeah, boy. This is the heavyweight fight that you want. Yeah, this is this is going to break the internet. This is going to break Twitch and it's going to break YouTube. This match is going to I I have been hyping up a storm on Twitter for the last 24 hours. Twitter blew up. I set out one tweet and Twitter just exploded. Everybody knows about this. All the big four know about this. All the big four have tweeted about this. Everybody in the Swagger community that is online is going to be watching this match. You do not want to miss it. So, all right, guys. This, CG, look at this. This is why you want the idea behind Grand Arena Challenges. Now, Neil, thank you so much for this. Uh, it was a pleasure for those who are only podcast listeners and don't uh, and and are not able to follow. Guys, we will report what happened somewhere in next week's show. It might be the fourth segment, in case you did not get to find out what happened with Zareth versus Urs. But um, we will report on that because I because once again we're probably getting the state of the galaxy. Let's get to it. Be nice to each other, damn it. Neil, yes, push the mate. button. You got it. Ta-ta for now, folks. What's going on? Where the hell are we? Paris? Thank you for pressing the self-destruct button. Attention, this is Colonel Sanders in forward command. Abandon ship. Abandon ship. All personnel. Works. This ship will self-destruct in exactly 10 seconds. <laughs> Counting down. 10, 9, 8, 6. 6? What happened to 7? Just kidding. 3, 2, 1. Have a nice, nice day. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello friends, this is Thaddeus from Going Nerdy. The Escape Podcast was filmed in front of a live studio audience full of tweaked out murder bears. Sit, boo-boo, sit. Good dog.